Jeff Gordon holds his first press conference and other Montreal Canadiens news. Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talk at Habs, where you get your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge. So Jeff Gordon holds his first press conference. That was yesterday. Um, it was it was really informative. Uh, I was expecting someone a little more hard assed. I don't know, uh, someone that I might not actually like very much. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see that Jeff Gordon is a very personable guy. He seems really nice. I thought he doesn't seem like the authoritarian that I thought he might be. And I think this is all good going into, um, you know, into this new new era of Montreal Canadiens hockey. He seems like a guy that's willing and ready to work as a team. And that's the way he says he's always worked. And I, that's what I want to hear. So uh, let's get into it. First, though, I'm going to go over a little bit of Montreal Canadiens news. None of it good. None of it. All involving injuries. Um, yeah, so this is uh, not really great news. Um, okay, let's start with this. So this happened on the last game. Um, Habs recall, well, this didn't happen last game, but the, re the reason for it. Habs recall forward Laurent Dauphin. Um, and I think he'll appear in the game tonight. So it'll be his first Montreal Canadiens appearance in a regular season game, I believe. Um, and that is because Josh Anderson left the game on um, Thursday with an upper, bo upper body injury. That's sort of what it is. And apparently he's going to be out two to four weeks. So not good news. So Josh Anderson... Upper body injury out two to four weeks. Laurent Dauphin called up to replace him. Jeff Petrie. So this is good news and bad at the same time, obviously. Jeff Petrie uh, is not going to be traveling. He didn't travel with the team because this is Saturday. They're in Nashville. Um, he's out with an upper body injury, which is a surprise because if you watch him play, we all kind of know that he has a lower body injury. One of the reporters from TBR reported that a couple weeks back that he could hardly walk. Uh, so uh, he's out with an upper body injury. He's out indefinitely. So this is good because we've been calling for this as uh, fans and the live streams in the chat that he needs to sit. Um, as much as that's going to be hard for the team, he needs to sit, get better, because he's not helping them in any way. Two points in 25 games, that's not Jeff Petrie. He looks horrible out there, making horrible decisions, can't move properly. Um, you're not seeing that big hip check of his, uh, Jeff Petrie, thank God he's sitting out. Uh, they've recalled defenseman Corey Sheneman. Uh, he is also making, I believe his first NHL start here tonight. Um, they recalled him from Laval and, uh, he'll be here. I imagine, um, until people start coming back because they're just on defense, it's pretty much decimated. So, uh, I'm not sure who's going to be in the lineup, but we're going to find out soon. Um, I'll have all the lineups and stuff in the pregame show before the game. That'll be at 5 o'clock. Um, more bad news. <laughs> so you remember uh, during the game or in the pregame show for the Thursday game, I mentioned that uh, Brendan Gallagher and Sammy Niku um, were placed on the NHL's COVID-19 protocol list. Uh, they had been tested and they got retested to confirm. And the bad news is that, yes, they have covid they're both in 10-day quarantine, uh, so they're out of the lineup, obviously. Um, I wish them the best. I hope there's the – apparently they don't have any symptoms. They're asymptomatic, so I hope that continues. Um, and I hope nobody else on the team gets it, right? We could be in for another COVID outbreak here. If two players are confirmed with it, last year it was one, and they shut down. So um, fingers crossed it doesn't happen here for Montreal, but – Brendan Gallagher and Sammy Niku both out 10 days uh, uh, in quarantine with COVID-19. Now, the last item here is an injury, but it, I don't think the player's out. And that's Alex Romanov. If you watch the game on, on Thursday, he went into the boards, I think in the second period, uh, collided with Ryan Paling and Kale McCarr, and then kind of a fight broke out. Uh, he wasn't really, I don't think that was the reason that the fight happened. It was between McCarr and Paling, I believe. And then um, another Avalanche player came in, was going to grab uh, Romanov and start fighting with him. I guess saw the broken nose. And you can see he just backed off. So you knew something was wrong with Romanov. He went off, uh, came back out later with a full cage. I imagine since he came back and finished the game, he'll be in the lineup tonight with the cage. So Alex Romanov with a broken nose suffered, uh, I believe, in the second period. 
So like I said, it's all bad news. There's nothing good here to report. Um, I'm waiting for news on a possible waiver pickup. There's a defenseman out there. I believe his name is Clegg. And um, it seems everyone's calling for them to pick this guy up. I wonder if they will, especially with all the defenseman injuries. So that won't happen until like 2 when I'm filming this in the morning. So we got to wait. I'll, uh, if you watch the pregame show tonight, if you're watching this Saturday on game day for the Nashville game, uh, should have them the pregame show. All right, let's get to Jeff Gordon's uh, press conference. So this press conference happened yesterday morning at 10. Um, very highly uh, anticipated to hear what he has to say. So he led the um, he led the uh, press conference off with a statement in heavily English accented French. I mean, he's an American from Massachusetts, especially. And this was out of respect. And I thought this was, you know, was was really good of him to do this. I was not expecting it. I don't know that any of the reporters would have expected it. But some of the reporters had the nerve to comment negatively on it when they got their chance to ask a question. And it's just like, you know, welcome to Quebec, Jeff Gordon. Um, only in Quebec that would happen. He says he's trying to learn. He's taking um, online lessons that his wife bought him. And he's asked to have patience. My take is this, that I don't expect this guy to learn French, to be fluent in it. I expect him to learn enough so that he could say a few things when he has a press conference. I don't think he needs to learn it for any other reason than that. Uh, unless, of course, this new Bill 96 that's supposed to come in here and teams are, and everybody's supposed to do business in French. I don't know how the Montreal Canadiens will do that in French if this happens because uh, it's, uh, hockey is the language is English. Uh, my thoughts is, well, we might see the actual the team actually move uh, or move the head office out of the province so they can conduct business in English, which is the most ridiculous thing. But again, welcome to Quebec. He says he will travel. Well, he's traveling to Nashville. That was yesterday. So he's in Nashville with the team today. Um, and he said the game on Thursday, that was his first time seeing the, uh, the, the team live. Give him a little time. He has to get to know the team and everything. And more on that is they asked him about his, uh, I think the reporter asked five priorities he has right now, um, you know, starting off here. He says he doesn't have five priorities to give him right now, but these are, this is what he wants to accomplish right away. He wants to learn the team, learn the players, learn the staff, learn the management staff, the coaching staff, all that, the uh, scouting staff, Everybody who works for the team. This guy wants to know everybody. He wants to get a feel for the team. Um, and then once he's done that and he feels, you know, um, he feels for the team, he can start doing things. But he wants to get a really good feel for the situation here. And the other priority for him is to hire a new GM. That's going to be one of the first things they do. So uh, that's his priorities. He wants to build out the analytics staff. There's a small anal analytic staff that works for the Habs right now. He wants to build it out um, bigger and make it better. He believes in using analytics. I don't know a ton about analytics, but I guess we're going to have to maybe start learning. I don't know. But I don't think this is a bad thing as long as they don't rely on analytics solely. But if you use analytics in conjunction with the eye test, and the, you know, um, I don't think that's a bad thing. He wants to build a better development team. I Actually, just a development team. I don't think there is one. Uh, to better help the, play, the draft picks and young players from as soon as they're drafted and right up until they make the NHL team. So I think this is a really great thing. One of Montreal's biggest problems, as we know as fans, is they don't develop players. They haven't traditionally over the last how many years developed players regularly. So this is good because... You know, it's, there's a lot of pressure on these kids in today's game, um, with all kinds, social media especially. So I think this is good. It'll help um, hopefully keep players from having to suffer the problems like Jonathan Drouet, like Carey Price that we've just gone through. Um, I think this is a really good thing from him. So, um, yeah, I think it's good. Can't say that enough. Yeah, He'll look outside the box for a GM. Example of that is former players or player agents and stuff like that. Now, when I watched it, I thought he said he was going to look for a guy that thinks outside the box. That's kind of what I got from it. But everyone else I've read 
seems to think that he said he'll look outside the box for a play for a GM. And I guess if you're looking at player agents and stuff like that, that is a bit outside the box. So I'm not sure if you guys watched it. Let me know what you think in the comment section about that specific thing. So I'm going to go with the outside the box in looking for the GM. He wants to find someone to complement his own skill set, right? Understands the business side, has a great knowledge of hockey and hockey people, which means connections. Having good a GM should have connections because you got to, you know, you got to network with people and make moves and all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, I think that's what he means there. Experience, not necessary. He's not looking for a yes man. So saying those two things says something about the guy. He doesn't, you don't have to have a ton of experience or any at all. And he doesn't want a yes man. He even said he'd like somebody who thinks differently than him so they can talk things out and look at things from so many different angles. So no yes man uh, involved. The new GM will bring experience or a skill set Gorton doesn't have that will complement Gorton's own, and that'll allow them to work as a really efficient team in tandem with each other, and not just two of the same guys, making the same decisions, thinking the same way. Um, I like that. I like hearing that. Wouldn't commit on Patrick or Wah. It's too early for that, he said. He respects Ra, will consider him like everyone else, not afraid of Ra's emotional and passionate personality or his temper, the French reporters really tried to push him on the Patrick Waugh issue. Um, of course they did, but Gordon wouldn't really change his answer. He just kept saying, look, uh, you know, he, I'm going to consider him like everybody else. Uh, that's it. And they, it's still going on since the, the um, press conference and in the, in the media, the French media. They really want Patrick Waugh. And uh, I, it, could be a, it could be a point of contention early on in Gordon's term here. In trying to get him to commit to acquiring or signing more French players from Quebec, they refer to his signing and acquiring local players in both Boston and New York. He said it's important, uh, especially in this market, to have local players. Says he understands that. You know, I'm glad he didn't say, he said local players, he didn't say French players. Why do I say that? I like French players. I'm nothing against French players or French people. But in saying that, it means um, they open the pool of players they can draft, right? If you're only drafting French local players, it limits you, just like everything else that here in Quebec, when it has to be French and you can't, they can't, you know what, I, you know what I'm saying? Everyone knows what I'm saying. All the fans know we're, st we're tired of this garbage. So I'm glad because there are still a lot of English players from Montreal that are out there or that you can draft. And uh, I like the fact that he said local. Makes more sense to me. Subscribe and ring that notifications bell. And hey, give a thumbs up. He feels his best quality is his feel for players and judging talent. Also his feel for people in general. This is a people person. He likes people. He gets along with people. I think this is a good thing. He says his teams are fast and skilled. I like that. We want you to become a member of Talking Habs. So uh, you know what kind of players he's going to go after talent. Look at the guys he's drafted, signed, or whatever in Boston and in New York when he was there. Um, yeah, the changes should be for the better, not for the worse. His message to fans in regard to the jersey thrown on the ice incident. Here's some his exact quote. Throwing a jersey on the ice is not going to help the situation, but it's out of our control. My first thought goes to the players. It's almost been the perfect storm this season against Montreal. Walking into this building, you can tell the energy is a little down. So, you know, and, and he's right about the perfect storm. Look look at the, um, the news today about all the injuries. It's just one thing after the other, all bad, nothing good this year. And uh, he says you can feel it uh, just walking into the building. He says also he feels for the players. The team can't control what happened. They can't control that person doing that. They can remove him from the arena after, but they can't control that it happened. And it doesn't help the players to figure out the stuff they need to figure out through this whatever's going on here. So 
He doesn't like it, but there's not much they can do about it except make the team better. Says he doesn't have a big ego. And I thought he did. I really was expecting a guy with a big ego. But you can see in this press conference, unless he's just a really good actor, that um, he doesn't seem like a guy with a big ego. He's a team player. He wants this to be a team situation in the management where they all work together in tandem with each other. He doesn't care about job titles, just wants to help where he's needed. So he doesn't care that, well, he's the executive vice president. When needed, he, of course, cares. But, I mean, it's not in his, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But he doesn't go around with that ego and that sense of himself. He's just one of the guys. I think that's what I, I get from that. He has a multi-year deal. It was reported that he had a five-year deal. He has a multi-year deal. He won't say more than that. Basically, he said, that's all I'll say. So I don't know how long he's here for. Uh, maybe it'll come out. I don't know. It probably is a five-year deal. He just won't say. Or maybe it's, you know, there's options, a couple years, then options. I don't know. But he won't commit to anything other than multi-year. Will not commit to anyone yet job-wise. And that's for any of the positions that have to be filled. Isn't saying no to anyone yet. And yes, he says, keep calling. If you're interested in the jobs that are available, don't worry, keep calling. He's listening. He's open to everybody. He has not decided on anyone yet, which is good to hear. It's not a guy come in with, well, I'm bringing in this guy, that guy, this guy. He's going to listen. He knows it's a unique situation here in this market, and I think that's really good. With six wins in 25 games, he understands the frustration here amongst fans and players and staff. When you, I just what I was saying, when you enter the building, he says you can feel it in the air, feels the sense of being down. So he understands the situation. He's not coming here, obviously, with blinders on. So <clears throat> Re rebuilt the New York Rangers, had internal meetings to discuss it, and they decided to rebuild as a group. Then let the fans know in um, a public letter. So in other words, he's not making these decisions if they decide to rebuild on his own. They will decide that this isn't happening tomorrow, right? Um, this is something good that I got from this. Where They're not going to try to turn this team around right now so they can make the playoffs, which they can't do in the situation they're in. I like that. They're going to take their time and do it right. And I, I that's what I get from it. So... Um, that's how they decided when he was with the Rangers to do the big rebuild. And they put out a letter and let everybody know. Very transparent. He says they will be transparent. I hope he's, that part is the truth. Uh, that would be nice. So they decide to do the rebuild here. Says he'll be transparent about it. But they haven't decided. I mean, it may be decided and whatever. But I think he is waiting till his management group is in place. And then they're going to decide what to do. They have time till the trade deadline. There's no rush right now. There's the time to do everything, and I'm glad that they're taking that time. He's not worried about uh, picking a GM that doesn't always agree with him. I said he's not looking for a yes man. He'll encourage his GM to have internal debates about things that they see differently. He's not looking for a yes man. The reason that I'm saying this more than once is reporters asked him. I'm going through the timeline of the thing. Says his wife bought him online French lessons. He doesn't know how good his French will get, but refers to the fact that he took up golf 30 years ago and still is a lousy golfer. So he says, please have patience. I like that analogy for it because it's true, right? He Where he comes from, he might not take the French at all. Does he need a lot of French? He doesn't. Not in the position he's going to be in. Um, but he's going to give it a shot. He'll do his best. I don't expect him to be good, good in French, but I expect that he'll give the attempt every time, which is what you want to see, the respect. He's going to give the respect. I hope they give him the respect back. Definitely, I hope, at the beginning of his, ter of his term here. Wants to have a better support staff uh, for the NHL players. It's a high-pressure game, and he wants to give them any support they need to help them do the jobs they do. So along the lines of the... Uh, uh, development staff, right, to help the uh, kids when they're drafted and as they get up to the NHL level. He wants to do the same thing for the players that are here now and 
again, referring to Jonathan Drew and Carey Price to help that maybe not happen uh, or just to make it better for them or help them through the problems that they do have. So I like that mental health, especially in the pressures of today's society and in the sport, I think this is a really good idea. His GM will have huge input in all decisions. Says he wouldn't want a GM job without it personally. So his GM is not going to be a puppet. I think I mentioned that somewhere else, but he won't be a puppet. He's going to be part of the decision making and said if he, he took a job as when he took the GM jobs and any job he would take in the future, if it, if it, if it happens, um, he wouldn't want to take a job as a GM and have no say in anything. So he's not going to do that to his GM. The new GM will be empowered fully over time. He's optimistic he'll find the guy who can work in tandem with him and gets the job done. So he will, when he gets the new GM, I don't expect him to say, okay, you're the GM, go out and do everything. I'm going to sit around. He's going to teach him. And over time, this GM will be fully empowered. Says the new GM won't be de decided on before Christmas. He was pushed on that. I know everybody wants a GM quickly. I don't. I want them to take their time. And when he said it'll be after Christmas, you could hear it's not going to be right after Christmas. It's going to be after Christmas. He doesn't know when. It'll be after Christmas. That's all he'll. So don't expect that Boxing Day they're announcing a new GM. This isn't going to happen. I would expect, you know, honestly, sometime maybe in January at the earliest. That's my, my opinion. Finally, and I don't know if this is going to make anybody happy, but it kind of does me, says Coach Dom will be the coach for the rest of the season. He was asked if uh, Dom's job security is safe, he's safe here, and he said yes, he'll coach here the rest of the season. So why do I like that? Because I, this team cannot turn it around this year. To bring in another coach, um, a new GM, you know, you're looking at, oh, well, we'll turn it around. There goes the good draft pick. More than likely, right? You finish up in the middle of the pack, not in the bottom 10 where you're going to get a good pick and maybe win the lottery and get the first pick. The, the season's lost. Why would you want to do anything other than that? Develop the kids, do the best you can this year and uh, make a decision in the off season and change up them. So I like that. I like what he said. I, I like the guy in my first uh, um, experience seeing him. Uh, I hope that continues over the time he's here, and um, we'll see. He'll be here for a few years, and maybe more than that, and we'll see what, what kind of job he does. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section what you think, if you liked it, what he said. And, um, yeah, just let me know what you think about the guy and about the news that I gave you in the news stories. That's it. Stay safe out there. Peace out. See you at the pregame show. Bye, everybody. Subscribe and ring that notifications bell and hey, give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching everybody. Hey, check out that video over there.